And can you please tell us a little bit more about uh, yourself and your story? Hi everyone, my name is Am. I am a French Canadian who grew up in a small village up north Quebec, Canada. And um, I moved out of that small village after growing up on a farm, mind you. <laughs> uh, I moved out when I was 15 and I started my first business when I was 19 years old. So I jumped right into entrepreneurship. However, when I opened my first restaurant, my mother got sick with cancer and I sold my restaurant and I went back to help my mom. And while I was helping her, I studied in health and nutrition and everything that would make me feel more connected to not being sick because she was sick. And, um, and I also learned about digital marketing. When she passed away, I had promised my boyfriend that once she would die, we would move to Italy. And uh, when she passed away, my boyfriend died. <laughs> so I still moved to Italy. I decided to uh, keep uh, my, my plan, even though he was not going to do it with me anymore. And I moved to Italy and I realized that I was on a journey of grieving. Uh, but and that journey was all about me, actually. It was about finding my, my, new, my new worth. Like, like I lost everything and I wanted to build it back. So I really sold everything and I left for six years. I went to 43 countries in six years and I just traveled from country to country while doing digital marketing, which became a business for me. And I, I ended up doing a mentorship. So I was teaching people how to do uh, digital marketing. And I also did that for publicly traded companies, investment firms, which uh, opened a lot of doors to me. So that's why I decided to launch uh, my consultancy full time because I used to do it um, for fun. Like I was paying the bills and it was easy and I was taking contracts as I go. And then I ended up doing a real business with it, which was very lucrative. And uh, now I'm back in Canada again, uh, 10 years later, and I'm um, building my business and I'm building a life again with with something to lose again because it's it's a process to go and build everything after losing everything so that's where i'm at now in my journey wow what a story um, <laughs> okay give me some some time <laughs> yeah. can you explain a little bit more who is your ideal client so what i specialize in is really since i've learned everything from scratch and literally uh when i i was 20 years old trying to make money online uh back then we didn't have mentorship programs we didn't have uh, coaches we didn't have mentors and strategies. i really learned everything from my gut like i followed my gut i made mistakes and some things worked and then i focused on what was working and ended up being pretty successful at doing what i was doing uh so my ideal client I would say would be someone that's passion driven because I choose only to work with people that are in it for a right mission. Like they're, I don't like working with someone that's only in that for themselves. Like if their mission is to help people or to help the world be a better place, then for sure uh, that would be my ideal client. And what I help them with, so I have, a, I call it the EMD framework, which is the four pillars that I help my client with. The first one would be uh, the inner game. So I help them with the productivity, with the mindset, like really feeling like a CEO, because most of the time I feel like entrepreneurs are not successful because they don't believe in themselves enough to really jump in both feet in. And that's what's missing and that's what's lacking. So I help them like really like, like have like blind confidence so they can achieve things and go out of their comfort zone and, and break the imposter syndrome, which a lot of people have, which is the first uh, pillar that I cover with my clients. And then the second one would be the creation. So creating offers. A lot of people, they know they're good at a lot of things, but how to package that and, and make, like make it something that you can market and sell, which is something that I help them with, like really crafting an offer that's perfect for them and their clients. Then monetize would be the third pillar, and that's when I help with the marketing strategies, whether it's organic or paid, uh, like the sales, everything that's related to sales and making money. And then the last pillar is scaling. And when, when I go through scaling, it's really like how to grow your audience more, how to be visible speaking in interviews like this, um, how to 
hire new team members or to train them. Uh, also, how to automate your offers so you can create something new and not have to lose like a lot of time working on both offers. So once you, you have something that's working out, you automate it and then you can create something new so you don't, you don't lose uh, sight of uh, the end goal. At this stage of your business, uh, are you working by yourself or you already have a team? In I have a team, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy about that. It's been a, a learning process. I've really taken the, you know, they're saying like a higher, a higher slow, fire fast. I really, I'm super picky with who I pick and if they don't, they're not good enough to my standard or I don't, like people need to be hungry to grow your business. So it's really important to find people that are, they're not in it for the money, they're in it for your mission because they want to work with you as a leader and they want to work with you because they believe in your work. That's when they're going to do good work. So it's really important when you hire people that they're not just there for the paycheck because that's easy to find someone for the paycheck and it's not supportive. So like sometimes you're going to go through down. Some ones are going to be harder. And if your team are only there for the money, it's just going to feel like very negative and, and draining your energy on top of paying them. But if they're all there to support you and to help you and to always remind you how good of a leader you are, then you can really create something magical. So since I understood that, it's really what I focus on, like having like people that really are perfect for me and, and my values. It's interesting. You said like uh, when you are picking your clients, you are very selective. And when you are choosing your team, you are also very selective. Do you have any yes. system for hiring and for uh, finding your clients? Like uh, uh, is somebody helping you like recruiters or how do you actually find the right people with the right skills to build your uh, team? When it comes to clients, normally they find me and then we jump on a discovery call and if they are not a perfect fit for me, and if I'm not like truly excited or I don't feel like I'm the right person for them because sometimes that's the case, I send them to someone that's all already one of my clients. So then this way it's helping my clients be more successful, but I also know that the person I refer is in good hands because I taught that person how to grow their business. So that's one thing that I do in terms of lead. I don't, I do my own discovery call. I hope in 10 years I still say the same thing because it's really important to pick who you choose to work with, especially if it's the private work. And then uh, when it comes to hiring my team member, I have a COO, which I trust with my eyes closed now. Uh, but of course, once she, like if I need someone, she does the interviews and then I have to set up a call with them to make sure the connection is there and they're in it for the right reason. And then I hire them. One of uh, the reasons of what really attracted me to you is your slogan uh, from zero to CEO. <laughs> Yeah. So can, can you share a little bit more about that slogan as well? Yeah, um, I don't, that's about, I think it was in January. I wanted to launch a program to teach people that started from scratch because I realized most people, if you start a company from scratch, you don't have $10,000 to hire a mentor. And I wanted to find a way to help them without having them put a large investment into something where it's, it's so new, like you, you don't even know if that's really something you want. You don't even know what, what's going to happen with your business because you're still figuring yourself out, right? So I wanted to find something that, that can help people when they're just starting out, but not only those. Like there's, I do trainings for all the levels, but I wanted to really like take them from zero to CEO because I noticed that uh, when I, I, I was in corporate, there's something that a, a lot of CEOs have, have in common is they're very organized. Uh, they have people working for them. They're, they're leaders. They set themselves as the leader. They're leading the company. And a lot of entrepreneurs, like I said before, are not, they're not confident enough. They're working for your business instead of having their business working for them. So I wanted to show people how to really like have the courage to lead your company and feel good enough. Like this is, this is your shit. Like, this is your company. You need to be the front of the company and make the decisions and really be confident and brave enough and believe in your capacities and abilities as a CEO. So that's, that's a little bit of tough love also that I give to my clients because if you want to succeed, you need to take control of your car. Like, you, you cannot have a driver if you want to race. Like, you need to be the one driving. So that's, that's where, like, the idea from zero to CEO came 
that's interesting because yesterday I think one of our members she she said I have a dream I want to be CEO. I have clients that are very very successful but they're not kind to themselves. Like I'm like, hey, you've done uh, like ten thousand dollars this year, uh, this month with a blog. Like, do you know how many people are trying to do that? Like, you need right now you're gonna go and book yourself a massage at this bar, something like. So I make them, um, I make them do a list of things that they want to do to spell themselves like small and big and like larger things. And then when they have a win, I'm like, pick something on your list and you do this right now. So then this way they, they have something like the, they're forced to celebrate their win. Like sometimes I'm going to eat chicken nuggets, watching a movie on a Friday night to celebrate that I made $10,000 this week. Like this is my way of celebrating. It doesn't mean popping the champagne or like going first class to Mexico. Like it can be something small, but just to be mindful about really like, taking the time to appreciate the, the present moment and doing something that makes you happy. And being happy could be go for a walk with your dog. It doesn't have to be big, but just to make sure like to really highlight that moment in your life. And uh, when situation is that uh, the things doesn't go as they want, what is your advice? Uh, well, it's going to happen, first of all. Like, like I, I have months where I'm like, oh, my God, this is, nothing is going as planned. But at the same time, you need to accept that it is what it is. Like, there's, unless you can change the situation, change it. But if you can't, it is what it is. You accept it and you move on. And you, like, you don't repeat your mistake or you, you change something so it doesn't happen again. But like, if you still like, stress about it, you're not the situation is going to win over you. You don't want the situation to win. You want to win over the situation. So if you accept it, then it's much easier to move on. Like it's normal. We all have up and downs. It's not just celebrations when you have a business. How do you find time for yourself, for your health and all other activities and how you combine with the, with the business? Because many women are concerned if they start their own business, they will not have any time for them self and for the family how is in your case i i believe to my core that if you don't have time to yourself it's because you're not making the time for yourself uh as much as i'm busy sometimes it gets really busy and then i have to eat a banana and peanut butter for lunch because i don't have time to get a proper lunch but normally like uh on weekends for example i don't book anything um like if I want to work, I do it, but then I, I'm going to be lazy in the morning. I'm going to watch Netflix and bed. Like I'm going to, to do whatever I want during the day and order food if I want. And then during the week, I make sure that my meal is prepped. So if I work from home, I, I don't need to stop my day to get something to eat. And like, that's why you don't want to the, go back to peanut butter and bananas. But <laughs> Like I make sure there's always something on hand. I make sure that my schedule every day is really, um, there's not too much on it because then you don't have enough time to get everything done and you don't feel successful. So what I tell my clients the most is to pick three things that they have to do during the day that are really important right now and to get them done. And then once they're done, they can continue with the list or take time off for themselves or something like that. But like as if you get three main things done during the day, you're going to feel successful. You're going to feel like you got shit done. And then you can just decide like, do I want to work more? Uh, is there something else that I should do? So and to make time, like if you don't have time for self care, put it in your agenda every Sunday, right? Like from two to 4 PM, I'm, uh, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm taking a bath with candles and I'm meditating. I don't know what you like, whatever you like, just set time in your agenda. If you can set time for work, you can set time for your workout or your self-care. And what is your uh, impact you want to achieve, let's say in one year from now with your business? I have a lot of dreams. Um, I want to grow zero to CEO to a thousand members. That would be my ideal world. I want to publish a book, maybe not in a year because that's a long, long uh, plan, but I would like to publish a business book. Um, I want to be an international speaker. So I've started doing that recently and it's going super well for me. Um, I'm just growing like my brand and uh, growing my team, growing uh, the cash flow so I can invest more. I like, I like to invest back into charities, but I would like to have time to volunteer myself. Like for example, uh, the, the hurricane in the Bahamas, I, give, I donated a lot of money to 
charities to help, but I would love to have the flexibility to go out there and help them rebuild. But this is not something that I can do at the moment with my setting in business, but maybe eventually I'm going to be able to take a month half because my business truly is working by itself. And then I can, I can go and I, my clients are not missing out on me because I'm helping people to rebuild their lives. So that's, that's kind of my dreams right now. And based on your experience uh, working with the clients and your life, what is something you can share with our community nobody else can? Um, I would say my, one of my biggest advice uh, that people don't really take seriously is the power of networking. I think you do take this seriously because you're giving the opportunity to people to, to talk on your platform, but a lot of people, they don't, they, they don't network and to be able to be successful, you really need a lot of people to, to encourage you. And a lot of people, they see networking as, oh, she wants to sell me something. I don't like, oh, she's sending me a message probably to sell me something instead of being like, oh, I wonder what is this person doing? Who is that person? They all come with bad intentions. It's not true. I never come with bad intentions and I'm successful. And every podcast interview, uh, every magazine features, every client's referral that I had, uh, every opportunities to speak on at events, it's all because I've been opening the door to new opportunities. So when someone come and say hi, I'm like, hey, how are you? I want to I want to know about them. I'm not like, oh no, here's someone who wants to sell me coffee. Like really like see the world with different eyes. Like people, the, we're all supposed to be a community. Stop like thinking you're in competition with everyone. Like we're all at the same level, really. You, whether you make a thousand dollar or you make a thousand dollar an hour, we're still at the same level. We're still on the same planet. So that's what I would say. That's a great message. Thank you very much, Em, for today's interview. Thank you for the opportunity.